In example B here, we have some data about Nadia, who's training for a 5K race. It says that the table shows her times for each month of her training program, and we need to find an equation for a line of fit, um, and then predict her running time if her race is actually in August. We can see here, if we number the months 0 through 5, and take a look at her average time each month, in January, she took 40 minutes. In February, she practiced a little bit, got a little faster. In March, she actually slowed down just a little bit and then picked that time up again in April and then was faster again in May and faster again in June. So overall, her time definitely went down. She obviously improved with practice, but it's not a straight progression. We had this little sort of bump in here between February and April, and her progression was much better between April and May than it was any other consecutive months, it looks like. So what we need to do is kind of get an overall view of how her progression looked over time. We can do that by plotting these points on a graph. We're going to put the months across the bottom. Uh, I actually draw on there so we can see. The months across the bottom and then the number of minutes that it takes her to complete the race going up the side. And in the first month, she had month zero really, January, it took her 40 minutes so that's what this dot is. And then in February, month one, it took her 38, month, uh, 38 minutes, so that's what that dot is, and so forth. This line that I've sketched in here is just sort of an, an estimate of the average of all those times. So what we need to do is find the equation of this line right here. We can see that it goes through this point up here, which is 0, 42. And it also goes through, looks like 4... 34, so we'll use this one over here. This, well, it's not really that point, it's it's the one above it. I mean, it's right, right here. Yeah, there we go, 434. So let's use these two points to figure out the actual equation of our line. I'm going to hide this other data over here so that we have a little more room to work. So if our two points are 0, 42 and 434, first thing we need to do is find our slope m, which is our rise over our run. And the rise is the difference in y's, so 42 minus 34. And our run is the difference in x's, so 0 minus 4. 42 minus 34 is 8. And 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So our slope then is negative 2. So now we have an x and a y and an m, but we don't have a b. If our form is y equals mx plus b, we still need to find that b. So let's plug in the other values we have and solve for b. So we'll get, uh, using the first point here, we'll have 42 equals negative 2, that's our m, times 0 plus b. Now that's convenient because obviously negative 2 times 0 is 0, so this is just going to go away, and we get 42 equals b. So now we have our y equals mx plus b format, we can write our equation y equals negative 2 times x plus 42. Now no doubt some of you were clever and quick and caught on before I did that we already had the y-intercept. <laughs> I could have just pulled that point right out of there knowing that the, the uh, x-coordinate was 0 said that this point actually was the y-intercept and I could have gone without calculating it but you know I'm only human. <laughs>